Again, what was noticeable is that uh, Mayo's first kick out in the second half, they went short. Obviously, look at James Horn looking at the stats at half time. Clearly, they lost an awful lot of their kickouts on their own kickouts. So, a change of strategy early on in the second half. Breaking ball won by Kevin McLaughlin. He's hit a goal and a point from playing this match so far. Aidan O'Shea takes the free, direct in on top of Andy Moran, who's uh, tussling for it with uh, Michael Shields. Moran does well, trying to turn and get a shot away, but Shields stuck to his task. Mayo get a 45, and that will mean their goalkeeper, Robert Henley, who left uh, his goal line quite regularly against Galway in the Connex semi-final to kick 45s, has once again been called up to kick this. And if he can nail it, the sides will be level for the first time in this match. He's already scored three points in the championship this summer. Not a bad strike rate when you consider he doesn't even kick these for his club. Almost perfect conditions for a place kicker. Very, very slight breeze blowing into his face. Crow Park falls almost completely silent. The Mayo crowd like it. The sides are level for the first time in this All-Ireland quarter-final. And with a half an hour to go, Paul Early, this is not the way it was supposed to be. No, and certainly Cork are worried, uh, virtually the fact that they brought on Graham Canty, Noel O'Leary has gone off. And what Mayo are doing, and they did it very successfully in the second half of the Connacht final, is they're kicking, burying their forward player, kicking directly in in front of the goal, and backing their forwards to win ball or, or win the breaks. And uh, that came from Andy Moore winning possession again out in front of Michael Shields. Here's Richie Feeney to put Mayo in front for the first time. It's shaved the post. And wide on the left-hand side. Richie Feeney celebrated his 28th birthday on Friday coming up there to join the Mayo attack and he very nearly hit the target but it's Mayo the 5-1 to one outsiders to win this match who are starting now to get their second wind here at Crook Park well taken by Alan O'Connor moves it on quickly to Donegro O'Connor being forced uh, out the field by Tom Kniff this is Fiacre Lynch now, gets it in front of Ger Cafferkey, spots the run of Alan O'Connor. It needed to be inch perfect just over his head, and that move breaks down. As Alan Freeman, now operating in the Mayo half forward line, tries to take on Graham Canty. Brings Seamus O'Shea into the match. He's got uh, Donegal O'Connor for company, and he wins his free. Certainly, the pace and the intensity of this match has grown. More and more. Here's Owen Cadigan, end of Varley, giving chase as Cadigan is forced to bide his time and slip it through towards Paul Kerrigan. Keith Higgins shadowing his every move. It's a real tit for tat battle in that corner. Shovel back outside as far as Paddy Kelly. He's had a quiet match. Again, the final pass, not what it needed to be. Mayo are crowding out the Cork forward line, not giving them time to think, let alone anything else. And it's a tactic that's worked quite well so far. Dylan again. Threads it through towards Killian O'Connor. Lovely ball from O'Connor to pick out Dylan. Dylan from point blank range has kicked Mayo in front for the first time in this All Ireland quarter final. And all of a sudden, Cork have some hard questions to answer. The Mayo captain timing his run to perfection, but the pass from Killian O'Connor, pure quality. Well, Alan Dillon was involved in that play on two occasions, won the ball way back in his defence, kept going forward. Killian O'Connor showing, showing great maturity to find Dillon on the run. And Cork under real pressure here. You thought that maybe, you know, a bit like Tyrone and Roscommon yesterday, that a team of the calibre of Cork might have lifted their intensity and their pace at the start of the second half, but it's Mayo who have done that, and done it very successfully so far. Now Cork trying to respond, it's Miska who slips it through towards Finton Gould, no free awarded. Referee Rory Hickey saw nothing wrong with the challenge, as the Mayo defence slams shut. Vaughan, great ball to pick out O'Connor. The roar of the crowd now buzzing in his ears as O'Connor 
takes it a little closer to goal. Back to Andy Moore. Dylan is in around the back, but Alan Crook claims that ball. It was his ball in his territory. And the goalkeeper spreads it away to the far side to Aidan Walsh. Well, one straw in the wind for Mayo supporters coming into this match was the fact they beat Cork in the National League back in April. 11 of that Mayo team on duty again today. And they certainly have not taken a step backwards since this game started. Jerk Africa does really well. Cafferkey involved again to Kevin McLaughlin and now Endavari. Managed to manoeuvre himself out in front of Owen Cotter. Ball breaks to Aidan Walsh. And the big worry, Mike, for Cork at this stage is that Mayo are winning the 50-50 battles and some of Cork's big players are just not performing. Aidan Walsh isn't doing as well as he did last year's championship. They're only operating really with two forwards, Paddy Kelly, Pierce O'Neill need to get into the game very quickly. Here is Pierce O'Neill, steps by the challenge of Trevor Mortimer. O'Neill kicks on the run. It's just gone wide. But Donald Vaughan has uh, collided with Dunica O'Connor by the looks of things. And we'll have a stoppage here. Mayo have hit, uh, incidentally, the last four points of the match. Cork having scored now for some 13 minutes. I think everybody waiting for, for Cork to take this game by the scruff of the neck and kick on, but so far they've really struggled to capture that form that saw them sweep past down last weekend. Well, absolutely, and uh, at, at this stage, Conor Cunahan is probably looking at the bench and saying, well, who can I bring in? He's running out of forward options in the middle of the field. You have to assume that maybe Nicholas Murphy might have 10 minutes in him and uh, perhaps now is the time to, to, to bring him on because they need to change the tide around the middle. Uh, I think Dunnock O'Connor has to be very lucky on that occasion if he wasn't booked because uh, he's picked up an injury from the clash but uh, he was certainly at fault. He, I think he tried to, to uh, stop Donald Vaughan in his tracks. He was lucky not to get a yellow card at least. Both players thankfully back on their feet and away we go again. Alan O'Connor hammering this in towards the edge of the square. Lynch jumping with Cafferkey, but Tom Kinniff was back to mind the house. And now Keith Higgins away to Alan Dillon. Two survivors from the, those All-Ireland finals of 2004 and 2006 in this Mayo team. Here's Alan Freeman. Well won by Andy Moore and top back to Freeman on the burst. Graham Canty loses his footing. Recovers well that Freeman trying to kick over his shoulder but didn't make good contact. As Owen Cadigan has his gallop stopped by Kevin McLaughlin. Pressure coming in from Killian O'Connor. It'll go down officially as a wide ball but the pressure being applied by Cork all over the field now by Mayo Paul, it's relentless. Relentless and again they would have got a huge, huge boost of confidence for the position that they're in at the moment. Work, the work rate, the work rate that uh, they've shown in the Connacht kind of Championship, they've carried it into this, this game, they're putting Cork under extreme pressure, the Cork full back line, Michael Shields is struggling with, with Andy Moore and uh, surprised again that maybe Cunahan isn't making a change there at this stage but uh, Mayo really playing with a high level of intensity and Cork, as I said earlier on, losing the 50-50 battles. Conor Cunahan has sprung a substitute, Mark Collins, who made his championship debut last weekend against Down. He's in for Fiacre Lynch. Enda Varley is out of the match as James Horan brings in Jason Doherty, a young man who scored seven goals in the National League for Mayo. Lost his place for this All-Ireland quarter-final. But he's in with a little over 20 minutes to go, and this game finely balanced. Free to court for a foul on Paddy Kelly. Alan O'Connor manages to step past Aidan O'Shea, but the pass was poor and intercepted by Keith Higgins, who's looked really sharp. Now Aidan O'Shea setting off on another one of these Maisie runs, hopped the ball twice though. Just seemed to get caught in two minds there, Aidan O'Shea. And possession back to Cork. 
Fintan Gould. This is Paddy Kelly. And now Paddy Kassan. Kassan fires it in, hopefully, but nobody at home. That was over the head of Donegal O'Connor. Paul Kerrigan had drifted out the field. And even with 20 minutes to go, you begin to get the sense that Cork are really missing the likes of Goulding, O'Neill and Sheehan in there close to goal as this latest Mayo attack peters out as well one point between the teams 20 minutes to go and literally anything could happen at this stage and looking at the body language of the Cork forwards as well their heads are down, it's not looking good the last four balls that went in to the Cork full forward line were kicked aimlessly our Mayo defenders picked the ball up it's time I think for Conor Cunahan to think about a change of strategy in the way they kick the ball in maybe even instead of bringing Nicholas Murphy into midfield pop him into full forward and kick long into the danger area because he'd certainly have a height advantage inside because it's not working otherwise at the moment for them Mayo win possession from the Cork kick out this is Donald Vaughan up from the half back line to Andy Moran now Kevin McLaughlin and Dillon Heels away to the left-hand side. Kassan trying to force him out. Dillon pops it inside towards Doherty. The ball just ran away from him. Stolen back by Canty. And now with Cork will try and play on the break here. They've moved Paddy Kelly into the full forward line. Paul Kerrigan, he's come out to wing forward. Here's Aidan Walsh. Now John Miskela. And Miskela to Kerrigan. Trying to use his pace here to take on Trevor Mortimer. Kerrigan spots the run inside of Miskela. Just lost his man for a moment. Down he goes again. Rory Hickey letting it develop. And the final shot was rushed from Miskela under pressure. Five wides for Cork. Looked for a moment there like Miskela had found some space to work with. But the Mayo cover back very quickly. And the chance was gone. Well... <laughs> Discipline from Mayo, again, Trevor Mortimer with the hand in over the shoulder, Miskela went down, um, not unlike the, the decision that went for Cork in the first half for the penalty, but uh, on that occasion the referee didn't give it, and uh, I think rightly so, but uh, again, things now working for Cork in the forward line. Killian O'Connor, setting off on his merry way, but tracked by Cadigan, and hacked away towards Aidan Walsh. Manages to pick out Paddy Kelly. This is Paddy Kassan. Once more, stealing across the halfway line. Donnick O'Connor. Back to the runner. Pierce O'Neill puts the head down and drives on. Inside to Kassan. Looking for Miskela. Miskela does well here. Across the face of the goal and it's up and over. And Paul Kerrigan was sneaking in around the back there looking for anything that might fall in his direction but Miskele got just enough on it the sides are level and I think on that occasion again Miskele second occasion he's gone forward in the last minute got the score at that time Paddy Kassan giving him the pass I think the half back line is saying to the forwards listen lads we need to be up there to support you because you're not doing it for us in this occasion Mayo get the game restarted very quickly Andy Moore out there in front of Michael Shields not giving each other an inch Moran into the centre towards Alan Freeman. Pops it off to Killian.